Yo, what is up guys? My name is Kegelo and welcome back to the procedurally generated dungeon crawler. Now, I've decided to make the first suggestion of moving the map up here because I needed some place to put all this stuff. And if I actually keep it down here, some of the maps, see how they're not actually loaded in some of the rooms? It'll make it hard for it to actually generate onto the map. So I'm going to actually be sticking these underneath the map so they're of easy access to sticking on top of the dungeon. Something else I did was I started working on the randomizer. Now this may look like meh, it's because it's just a big pile of blocks and things like that, command blocks and so on and so forth, testing for binary and things like that. So what I did was I made a binary random number generator. So if I press the button, it'll say the number, there we go, 30. And there's another one, nine and so on and so forth. So the more I press it, the more the number will actually change. And what I did was I actually took this, which is a giant binary to numeric number converter. And it seems pretty big right now, but it generates and actually it just turns the number from binary to numeric. So this would be numeric 31. And this is the binary for 31, for 30, for 29, 28, 27, all the way down till there is only one. So yes, I just made a binary to numeric converter and this generates so then it makes the numeric number nine and things like that. That always gets sent all the way to this right here, which this is what tells which is going to be there. So this is a number 20, 19, and it tests for which room is actually going to be spawning. So if the number is selected through numeric, that's the room that's going to be spawning. So it chooses here and then it tests to see if it can actually do it. Now, I haven't actually set up the detection of the room, which I'm actually working on right now. It's not actually that difficult. So what we're gonna be doing is assigning each direction of the room a number. So this would be right here. The four-way intersection would be direction number one, and I actually have my sheet right here. And things like this, this would actually equal number 13. This equals number 10. This right here equals number six. This equals number five and so on and so forth. And yes, that's going to be determining all of the directions and everything. I actually have a duplicate right here. This is the original prototype. And this is what generates all the directions and tests for them. Now, I figured that this might be a little bit long, seeing that it's already right now nine blocks and it's just going to generate very, very long. So that's why I came up with this idea way over here. And this is what's actually going to be testing it. So this right here, these five command blocks, this one in the corner tests for the number, which is the number of the room. And once that tests for, it's going to also test for if the room can actually spawn in these directions. So there will be four different ones, such as, let's say, this will be, if it can't generate numbers two through five, it'll be numbers two through five in the scoreboard right here that can't generate, and there'll be an inverter, so on and so forth. And it'll be for all four sides, so it'll test every single side around it to make sure it can actually spawn. And once it tests for that, these will all turn off, causing these to turn on, which there is a clone button or a clone command, which will clone the room into existence. And there is also a scoreboard which sets the room that we just set to the actual direction that it's going to be facing. So then the other rooms can generate accordingly. Now I stacked a couple of these on top of each other and that's only just right there, not very far. And they stack very, very well, I've noticed. And these are gonna stack about 31 on top of each other and then there's gonna be a grid of them 10 by 10. So there's gonna be about 100 of these underneath the entire grid way up there. And these work very, very well stacked on top of each other. The only reason I'm going to be using the glowstone in here is just because of lighting issues and the updating of the lighting because that usually generates some lag. So if I add some glowstone, I've heard that it removes the lighting flashing and the lighting updates. And I'm also sorry that I haven't been able to work on it that often. That's just because school and life and college are all getting in the way and I'm trying to work on it as much as possible, but I'm still trying to get along with life. So life's always more important than playing video games and things like that, but I, I like playing video games. It's a lot of fun. So, yes, that was the end of this episode. I will be sure to catch up on the next one. Later.